What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about intermittent fasting again. What do you know? We're really on a roll with this topic, but we have had some new studies come out and it's important to assess them. But first, make sure you do your thing, leave a comment for the algorithm, FTA, for the algo, for Al Gore, whatever tickles your fancy. All right, this week we're looking at a study that was published in the Journal of Obesity where they were looking at intermittent fasting and protein pacing versus normal caloric restriction and its effects on fat loss, and several biomarkers of health. So this study had about 50 participants and they randomized them into two groups. The first group was just doing normal calorie restriction following the American guidelines for nutrition. I believe it was about 35% of calories from fats, 50% of calories from carbohydrate, and 15% from protein. Then they did another group that was doing one or two days per week of fasting. And when I say fasting, it was like 500 calories a day. So kind of like the 5-2 diet, except based on the methods, they started out with two days per week and moved into one day per week of fasting. So started off as kind of a 5-2 approach and then went to a 6-1 approach and they added something with this called protein pacing. Essentially, they were just following a high protein diet and spreading that protein over multiple meals. What did they find after eight weeks? They found that the intermittent fasting group was superior for weight loss, fat loss, waist circumference, and most of the biomarkers of health were pretty similar. Both groups improved their biomarkers of health, but on a few of them, the intermittent fasting and protein pacing group was superior for the improvements in those biomarkers. I've had a lot of people send this to me and say, see, calories were equated between these diets and look which group lost more body fat. But there's one major caveat here, and that is this study did not equate for protein. And we know that protein not only helps with lean mass retention, it also has a thermogenic effect and can increase energy expenditure. So in this study, the protein pacing group increased their dietary protein by about 25% per day, whereas the caloric restriction group actually decreased their dietary protein by about 25% per day. Now, I will say the difference in weight loss is pretty large to be explained by the difference in protein, However, this was a relatively free living study. And what is very, very likely in these free living studies is that the groups doing a little bit more of an extreme sort of diet tend to do well, at least in the short term. So it's likely they had better adherence because on one day per week, they just weren't eating that much. Whereas the caloric restriction group is more of eat a balanced diet, practice portion control, when it's not attended with appropriate lifestyle behavior modification, those kinds of recommendations tend to be relatively poorly followed. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened in this study, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was the case. And we have to fit this with the overall body of literature that has pretty clearly demonstrated when you equate protein and calories under highly controlled conditions, you don't see differences between diets in terms of fat loss, weight loss, and most biomarkers of health. What do I think the practical takeaways from this study are? One, if sort of intermittent fasting, like a 5-2 or 6-1 style of intermittent fasting helps you adhere to a diet better, then it certainly doesn't seem to be worse than just straight up caloric restriction. The other thing this study does, and I think the real takeaway, is that dietary protein is great when it comes to lean body mass retention, fat loss, thermogenesis. I think most people could do with increasing their dietary protein. Now for you meatheads out there that aren't gin pop, who are already consuming like 2.5 grams per kilogram of protein per day, I'm not talking to you. You're already getting the benefits of protein. You don't need to take it up to three, four grams per kilogram per day unless you really, really want to, but I doubt you're gonna get extra benefits from that. For those of you out here who follow me, who may be more gin pop, not as big as my meathead audience, most of you could probably do with increasing your dietary protein and trying to get multiple high quality protein meals per day because we do know that there is no storage for protein in the body, really. And so trying to have multiple protein feedings per day appears to possibly be superior to a single protein feeding per day. So if you practice intermittent fasting, like a 16-8 style diet, if you're having an eight hour feeding window, I'd recommend to try and get at least three high quality protein containing meals during that eight hour period, if you can. All right, guys. 
Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my research review reps, clicking the link in the description. Every month we break down five studies just like this in nutrition and exercise and supplements, and we take them and make them into a format that is palatable and easy to understand without a bunch of scientific jargon. We write it in plain language, well, as plain as we can, to help you better understand the research out there and be able to help you separate what's real from what's BS because a lot of social media influencers and even the mainstream media drastically misrepresent what these studies say. And we are trying to take the power to the people to give you guys what the studies are really telling us. So make sure you click the link, subscribe to that. I think you guys will really dig it. When you subscribe, not only do you get the current issue, but you get all of our back issues as well. So click the link in the description, check it out, and I will catch you next week.